Sewing Lookbook Behind the Scenes. In this episode, number five, I'm going to be reviewing my reversible coat that's coming up. new to the channel, hello, I'm Colleen and if you enjoy refashioning old clothes and new and also fashion sewing techniques, consider subscribing and let's get started. So in the final episode, episode 5, I'm going to be reviewing my reversible coat. So I'm going to show you some of the techniques that I've used. So here it is, there's that one. And here's the other one. So I've got two coats in one. So um, what I'll do, I'll bring you down in a moment. Let me see. I've enjoyed making this project and I've also enjoyed doing this series. So, um, and if you want me to do some more series type content, please let me know and put that in the comments. Um, it was a little bit of a challenge making this coat, even though it's kind of very simplistic in design, but just because it's very simple in design doesn't mean you're not going to come across problems and issues that you're going to find hard to solve or may not find hard to solve. Um, the fabric was, um, I just love the fabric so much. Was it the right choice for this coat? Yeah, I do think so. Um, maybe the colour probably isn't the right choice because it did need to have sta more stabilisation. Um, but I think what I was trying to achieve, I achieved with this coat. Would I wear it? Absolutely, yes. Um, so what I'll do is I'll show you what I have done with this coat and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about it. So I'm going to bring you down now so you can have a look. So let's start, where should we start? Um, we'll start from the top, we'll start with the collar. So here it is, so this is the wrong side of the fabric and it's just as gorgeous as the right side of the fabric. So here's the collar, and um, so this is the front of the collar where I've curved it round and I remember telling you, uh, I'm not sure if it was a previous video to this one, where I had a little bit of a problem with the collar curving so i managed to reduce quite a lot of that actually um, and the technique that i used was a gathering so from here to all the way around to here i put a like a running stitch and i pulled it so that i can get some of the fullness out and then i steam pressed it so um i, I did the best that i could to make sure that i didn't damage the fabric or you know didn't walk the collar any further so the result of that is good so um yeah i'm happy i'm happy with how that turned out so for the back of the collar um because i used the flat bell seam it was quite sturdy to keep that collar standing without any addition of any kind of boning or anything like that and um, for the moment anyway so um so that was i'm happy with that so it's flat bell seam throughout the whole of the garment as well so you've got that there in the middle of the collar where it joins at the back so let me just turn it around to the back so here i had to put a bias strip in because i had a seam and so that um, I could get kind of a neat finish, it worked. But saying that, um, I had the ends here were very bulky. So um, I don't, I may, says me, I may go back and put like a cream coloured fabric, maybe a bit of satin, which is a thinner fabric, and maybe that will do the job because it kind of took control of the collar. So it didn't allow the collar to be as curved as what it should be. So I did struggle with that a little bit. And if you can see from the sides here, how kind of bulky it was, but I did trim it down. And because this fabric frays a lot, I had to be really careful. But um, the, results, the results aesthetically, is nice um functional yeah but it is fighting with the front of the collar 
so um yeah i may have to rethink that when i come if i yeah i think i will make this coat again so if i made this coat again i would definitely rethink it so as for the let's go for the edging of the coat i was going to edge it with another fabric um and then when i did the first overlock it kind of married in with the design and the texture of the fabric and i've liked that and i was like you know what i'm going to stick with that and see how it goes and i liked it so i had to overlock it again so that i could get a, a lot more thicker thickness to the edge and i don't have um no do i no i don't have any little fibers poking through or very minimum from the fabric itself so that's worked fine so i'm happy the way that turned out so i didn't have to think about that too much so and that's all the way around so i'm really happy with that all the way around the garment and also the hem hemline as well because i was thinking about for turning it that way and it's like you know mm, no i didn't like that and i think that's what made up my mind to go ahead and just get a closer fit a closer stitch to the overlocking or surging so that's why i ended up for and it looks neat it looks tidy it looks finished and that's what i wanted to achieve i wanted to keep a minimum of fuss to the garment to my coat so yeah i'm happy with that and let's see oh let me talk about the sleeve <laughs> this sleeve this was another and they also did that around the sleeve as well so it in the sleeve is also um, over overlocked or surge so for the sleeve i have here can you see this kind of piping effect and it's there's no piping in this it isn't a piping technique that i've used what i did was is that this is the wrong side of the fabric so I, I i did kind of experiment to see which would look better this kind of effect on the front or the wrong side of the fabric and it looks better on this it's not as noticeable on this side and hence the reason i went for the wrong side of the fabric excuse me excuse my voice so um um so what i did was is that i trimmed down i kind of treated it like i was doing a flat bell seam and it is a flat belt seam actually really when you think about it because I did the same technique that I did with this as I did the flat belt seam and it was hand sewn. So it looks as though there's piping in there but it isn't. It's just that the fabric is really bulky. But it's nice. I do like it. It's a nice effect. Um, if I was going to do this sleeve, this coat again, I would definitely rethink the sleeve a bit more because I did have a bit of issue with the underarm. underarm because I've got two bulky seams that I tried to um, get in there and it wasn't happening, the, it, the fabric was fighting. So I'm going to have to hand sew that, but it's, it's getting there. Let me just show you that. So I just need to do some hand stitching on that section, on both on both arm underarms, but I'm happy with that. And there's also a dart. You, should, you shouldn't be able to see a dart, but there's a dart there. So this is the dart on the wrong side and then what I did was just hand sew it into place so you can't really tell. So then those are the kind of tricks that you that if you're aware of you can actually get away with telling people you've got like a shaped sleeve and it looks very shaped and people want how how have you achieved that? Well it's with the dart, it's with an elbow dart. So that is the wrong side and the slits. Let me show you the slits. So the slit. Slit is there. And that looks gorgeous. So again, it was, um, I turned it back on itself because I was thinking about just having it flat so that it would look like this 
but it, it was just for me it was just kind of a little bit too much interference on this side on the wrong side and I wanted to keep the similarity between both coats as much as I possibly could hence the reason I didn't hem it because if I hemmed it as well it would have been like that so um, yeah so I opted for folding back on itself and yeah that looks gorgeous so yeah and especially with the edge finish with the overlock or surgeon that I've done to it is is I'm happy with I'm absolutely happy with so that is the wrong side of the coat is there anything else um no so let's turn it to the right side no pockets but you know I may I may put pockets on I don't know yet um let me see let me turn it to the right side Here's my second coat. It's been a while since I've made um, a versatile coat. Very many, many years. So there we are. So um, let me just turn it this way so you can see the colour. And you've got just the seam line for the shoulder and just got the seam line for the sleeve and you'll see um, you see this on my on, on my body shortly as well because I've done a little video for you as I always do when I do my look books so I've done the same here and I've got my pockets patch pockets on this side and let's see and there we have it so let me just turn it on to this side Oh, let me so show you what I did with um I'll show you that in a minute. What I did with the size seam. You know that little mistake that I did. So here we have this side seam. Got a clean look to this side, so that's nice, nice clean look. And there's a side seam that's open, that slit, seam line, and the pocket. And that's it. So let me just show you how I resolve the situation with that. What side is it on now? See, I did it that well, I don't even know which side. No, it's not this one. It's not that, not that side. It's gonna be this side. Yeah, there it is. So what I did is, um, I kind of did like a running stitch all the way within that mark there and try to there was a little fringe there and I tried to stick that into the um, seam but it wasn't having it, it was fighting so it's like okay I'll just have to trim you away. So that's what I did, so I trimmed it away and then hopefully that will be, yeah, that should be, that should be okay actually, I'm, I'm happy with that. I mean it happens to the best of us doesn't it? So yeah. And that's it. So that is my reversible coat and now you're going to have a look at how it looks on both sides so that that section's coming up now
book and I just say thank you so much for all those people who made comments about my pocket and coming up with solutions so that I can have pockets on both sides. I want to thank you so much and I would have considered it if it wasn't so, if my code wasn't as made up in the process of when those comments came through but thank you very much and I will definitely take some of those ideas into mind when I make this coat again. I'm not sure when it's going to be but um, I will definitely, I've got a pattern and I'll definitely make this coat again. So thank you for all your comments on throughout this series. It's been amazing and I've loved it. There's been a lot of pressure I must admit because uh, like I said um, and I think I've been mentioning it throughout my video that um, you know I tend to do my work in sections so for example I'll interface and then pop to the following day I'll baste or you know um, um, I, I do perhaps make up the sleeve and then make up the collar and then make the waistband you know etc etc I do them all in stages I've been doing that for a number of years now um, I don't I can't I cannot remember the last time I've ever sat down and made a garment from beginning to end and because a lot of my garments are involve a lot of hand sewing, which I know a lot of you don't like doing, but it's a best technique if you're looking for more professional clothing because um, machines, sewing machines can't do everything. So it is kind of, for me anyway, a 50-50 process of hand sewing and also uh, machine sewing. But I do understand the, um, you know, people who just prefer to use a sewing machine throughout the whole of their project. I was one of those people when I... I must admit when I was younger and um, perhaps I'm not saying you're impatient when I was a little bit impatient and my mum would you know kind of like get a needle and thread and that will look much better and it's like mum just, just just borrow me your sewing machine so I can get it done quicker um you know it's just it's just one of those things um and also you either like hand sewing or you don't like hand sewing I don't know if I particularly like hand sewing and between me and you, that my mum <laughs> listening, I probably don't, but I know that hand sewing gets me the best results for more professional looking garment. That's it. <laughs> There's nothing else to add to that. It's just part of the process. You know, if you heard of couture, in couture clothing, yeah, well, that's one of the reasons that their garments look amazing. It does have a certain amount of um, hand sewing um, in many of their garments. So once again, thank you so much for your comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Do share. Please leave as much comments in the comment box below if you want me to do something like this again. I know it's been quite short. I wanted to keep them as short as possible. And if you want me to do them again and you want to be a little bit longer, then also put that in the comment box. The more you comment, it will help me to kind of make decisions about doing more serial um, um, content and if you want me to do anything um, as regards so longs and content like this format then please also put that in the comment box below and do share this video and if you're new to your channel do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell so that you receive notifications of when I upload videos and I will see you next time